the average for developing countries is like 30 students per teacher. We're down to 12. So assuming we go back, you can e effectively reduce your teaching complement by half to go back up to those ratios. Not that we want to go there, but I'm just giving you an idea. That means you could probably double salary. We maintain certain budget lines at the 2023 level. We are justified. Or even consider a 5% increase. We could redirect approximately $20 billion towards improving the lives of hardworking taxpayers in Guyana. On a daily basis, only 70% of our teachers show up to work. So it means that 4,228 teachers of the 14,000 don't show 38 million from refreshment and meals, leaving the government with 504 million for this purpose. I want to repeat that. This budget has 504 million for refreshment and meals. If we take 38 million from that, we can reallocate it. Two point oh, you still didn't get your ticket? This flight takes off every single day. Tap that subscription button. Thanks. 20 in 2012, we were you we had a teacher. If you take the teacher for children ratio, for child ratio. You would find out that in 2012 it was 23.16. Today, overall, it's 12.69. Overall. So what, what happens is that you take the total number of students, 180,000, and divide it just around 180,000. It's 178, I think, something. I'm wrong there now. So the numbers... But, but we did the exact numbers here, so I'm just giving you the wrong. And you divide the, the number of students by the number of teachers we have. So we pay over 14,000 teachers on our payroll. That's on the payroll. It works out to 12.69 per teacher. For every 12.69 students, we have one teacher. It used to be in 2012 for every 23 students, we have one teacher. So how does this number stand up globally? It's better than the United States and 156 other countries, including the average for many European countries. Teacher-student ratio. That shows a commitment to hiring people in the sector. Now people say, this is, might be too much. Just imagine we go back to say 20. Say 20, which is the average for developing countries is like 30 students per teacher. We're down to 12. So assuming we go back, you can e effectively reduce your teaching complement by half to go back up to those ratios. Not that we want to go there, but I'm just giving you an idea. That means you could probably double salaries. But we have now smaller classrooms. But many teachers across this country may still be teaching big classes. Big classes, but why is that happening? And I think it's time now to examine why some of these things are happening. Because from our records now, what was recently given to us recent, a couple of days ago, that 70% of, on a daily basis, only 70% of our teachers show up to work. So it means that 4,228 teachers of the 14,000 don't show up daily because only 70% show up to work. I know if you are 14,000, 70% of 14,000 show up. So we have to examine this carefully because we're hearing about 6,000 teachers striking now. But if 70% or 4,228 don't show up on a daily basis, 
then there is a big problem because the state is investing more, it's paying for the teachers, it's putting in a huge sum of public money into health, the, the education sector for teachers, and what's happening? It, so many don't, may not show up. And then the distribution is also a problem because some regions have lower ratios and others higher ratios, and we need to examine this. But clearly, why am I giving you all of this, this statistic now? It's to show a strong commitment on the part of the government to put in the effort, to make an effort to change the sector and to give our children the best education. And, but we now need to look at what happens in the sector itself, is whether we are getting value for money. This is, this is an important thing. I can, um, the ratios for primary school, secondary school, teachers for students would be different. I didn't go through, I have the disaggregated figure, but I think I made the, the core point, which is a massive change from 2012 to now on teachers student ratio, and largely because of our commitment we hired since we got back into office over 2,000 teachers more we added to the complement of the existing. And teachers have gotten from the 2015 level more than the 50% increase. But under this government alone, graduate teachers have gotten about 30, 33 to 35% increase since we got into office. The skilled teachers. And what's the objective here? The objective has been to ensure that more and more of our teachers go into the skill category so we have better quality education. In two years, in the years we've been in office, we have graduated from CPC over 3,000 teachers. Over 3,000 teachers we have graduated from CPC. And in the last two years alone, maybe 3,000 teachers from CPC. The training, massive amounts of money in the budget for training of teachers. As you train and you go up, the salaries start getting better. And that is why we focused on that. And secondly, through the goal program, we have over 4,000 teachers who have finished goal or on the goal program. If you look at the two combined, that will be nearly six to 7,000 teachers who have benefited from training or are on the goal program, from training under this government, on part of a program paid by the government of Ghana. And the moment they hit that threshold, the moment they start getting degrees, etc., you see they start getting the, the salaries start becoming higher. That's where we want to go. And that is why we are encouraging higher increases at the top. Now, what, what about the bottom? Teachers, we did a survey of the private banks and their entry level for person with five subjects CXC is like between 90,000 to 120,000. That is the banks. And when you come in, the teachers at the lowest level, even the aid, they're about 90,000 at that level. So it's competitive with the banking sector, but we don't want people to remain there. We want them to be trained and we are providing the opportunity for them to be trained to grow higher. That is our plan. So we massive allocation of resources in the budget to the sector, improvement of working conditions, improvement of salaries, providing more opportunities for training and and a higher pay at the upper end of the scale so people it encourages people to train now in this video we can hear from both sides we can hear from vp jack deal on how he plans to rectify the strike that's going on right now in the country with the teachers then why are we going to listen to jack deal and not the president's perspective 
And why are we going to listen to Jack Dio's perspective and not the, the Minister of Education or the Minister of Labor? Because we know that VP Jack Dio, President Jack Dio, Barrett Jack Dio is the person that is actually calling the shots. Why? Because he's outranking most of the other ministers. If you think about it, VP Jack Dio has been in government since the early 90s so he's a stalwart at dealing with matters in the country he's a scholar at finances and he's a head of state with experience ranging for more than decades so we know that he's the person that's really calling these shots right now when it comes down to what these teachers gonna get and what they're not gonna get so when we hear that breakdown right there Better training for teachers. More money for trained teachers, for teachers who are better equipped to educate their students. You all are the ones that are going to get more money. That's what the VP just said. And he's providing better training opportunities for y'all so that y'all could advance and get to that money and at the same time improve the education structure in the country so that the students them gonna have a better learning learning environment because they're dealing with more educated and skilled persons when it comes down to teachers that's a good point that's a good point but at the same time we gotta consider now our president is comparing our small population to larger populations and larger countries around the world which from my perspective might not be a fair comparison because Guyana is a very small population of persons so we can't really look at the class sizes and stuff like that but they're saying that that's how they do it around the world so let's just consider it for for uh, this video purpose right now smaller classes less students and VP Jack Dio is saying that look maybe if we didn't hire so many teachers maybe if we now get rid of some of the teachers that we already have we might be able to double salaries i mean that's one of the perspectives that he just threw out there that you know kind of sounds like one of the solutions that they might be playing around with now do they really plan to lay off some of the teachers because he even pointed out that look a lot of these teachers don't come to work on a regular basis enough of them just call out so why are we paying them all of this money why are we making sure that they're trained and why are we gonna now give them double salary and they don't even come in most of the times that's what vp jack Dio is saying he's saying look if we didn't have so many persons on staff maybe we might be able to afford to double the salary of those teachers that we do have on staff now let's consider this another thing too that we're hearing going around the place a lot is that the whole strike is illegal the teachers union needs to be audited because it's so many years since they've had an audit run and where is this money going x y and z but the silly thing that we ain't considering as well is that the same people that is saying that the teachers union need to be audited was running the country for most of the years that they saying the audit wasn't run so now we got to ask ourselves again is this just like a red herring that they're throwing out there to cause confusion in the camp with the teachers so that the teachers then will be kind of deshuffled and go back to work not getting their due or not getting what they actually strike for in the first place because if you really consider what's going on here, in the richest country in the Caribbean right now, right? And in one of the richest and fastest growing economies in the world, why are we finding it so hard to compensate some of the most important people in any country? So if we're going to compare countries and we're going to compare things, let's contemplate that teachers are some of the most important people in any country. Because, look, the most important resource is your human resource and your labor force, a.k.a. your human resource. 
So let's think about that. Now, the more educated your labor force is, the better equipped and more empowered they are, which means it's a stronger form of resource that you now have within your possession as any head of state. So that's the importance of the teacher. Let's have a conversation about this in the comment section. Because it's been so many days now, more than five days now, the teachers are out in the sun protesting and calling for betterment, better wages, and an improvement in the way that they're compensated for their services. Let's see what comes out of this. Because you're hearing the proposals and from VP Jack Dio. Now, we're going to get into the conversation that Aubrey Norton had and his perspectives that he's bringing forward when it comes to solving the problem with the teachers, when it comes to bringing a solution to the table to end the strike. Let's hear what Aubrey Norton, the Honorable Aubrey Norton, has to say about this matter right now. With prudent management of our financial resources, isn't, it is entirely feasible and possible to allocate more funds to our dedicated public servants, including teachers, nurses, doctors, and disciplined servicemen and women. A careful analysis of the government's recurrent expenditure, which is where wages and salaries are catered for in the budget, reveals significant room for optimization and reallocation of resources to pay all public servants a, high, a significant increase. The current regime's recurrent expenditure in 2024 amounts to 480 billion, a substantial sum. By scrutinizing budget lines and identifying areas with excessive expenditure, such as fuel and lubricants, rental of buildings, print and non-print materials, among others. It becomes evident that prudent management can yield substantial savings without compromising essential services or benefits. For instance, if we maintain certain budget lines at the 2023 level, we are justified, or even consider a 5% increase we could redirect approximately $20 billion towards improving the lives of hardworking taxpayers in Guyana. This can be achieved without imposing undue strain on the overall budget sum of $1.146 trillion. For example, we can relocate funds, reallocate funds as follows. 38 million from refreshments and meals, leaving the government with 504 million for this purpose. I want to repeat that. This budget has 504 million for refreshment and meals. If we take 38 million from that, we can reallocate it. 2.7 billion from dietary expenditures, allowing the government to still spend 10.7 billion for dietary needs. 486 million from national and other events, pro providing the government still with 1.7 billion for such occasions. We can take 8 billion from other mis miscellaneous expenses, leaving 20 billion for the government to address unforeseen costs. That needs to be repeated. The government has. 8 billion as miscellaneous expenses. 2 billion from the electricity budget line, enabling the government to sp still spend 7 billion for electricity related expenses. 2 billion from print and non print materials, leaving the government with 3 billion for this line item. S take 780 million from fuel and lubricants allowing the government to still have more than $5 billion to use for traveling purposes. By strategically reallocating from funds from these and other areas, 
we can easily achieve the 20 billion redirection without significantly disrupting the current the recurrent program in budget 2024 this approach ensures that our, that our financial resources are used efficiently and effectively prioritizing the needs of our poor and vulnerable citizens while maintaining the integrity of essential government services. It is important to note that these resources are available without a reduction in corruption. So if we reduce corruption, we will have far more money to be allocated. What that indicates is that there is still more resources available to the people if there is a reduction in corruption in government. Further, we note the PPP's attempt to play the blame game regarding the IMF Public Investment Management Assessment from 2017, which raised serious concerns about Guyana's capacity to manage public investment spending. With expected losses due to inefficiency and corruption that far exceed that of our peers, the IMF has repeatedly urged reform, and we began this process in 2018 only for the PPP to abandon it. To that end, in 2022, the IMF, and I quote, staff urged the authorities to implement the recommendations of the 2017 report and to undertake a public expenditure, expenditure review to assess the efficiency and effectiveness of public spending on court. Therefore, what Jack Deere is saying is trash. Failure to reform is costing Guyana 41 cents out of every dollar invested. This is over a billion US dollar in waste and corruption this year alone. We will take proactive steps, like eliminating waste and potential corruption as above, while also prioritizing the, deliver, prioritizing the delivering to the people of Guyana an improved standard of living. We, as a government, will hire thousands of Guyana's young people international experts and consultants, as well as work closely with the IMF to drive the process of reform. Our people-centered approach, which will guide the coalition next government, is imperative. It guarantees that the benefits of prudent fiscal management will directly impact the pockets of our citizens by aligning expenditure with the needs of the people and fostering simultaneous development across the country, we can achieve sustainable progress and prosperity for all. We reiterate our position. In the present budget, we can find money to pay all public servants. Thank you. Thank you. Well, when you listen to that presentation, and some of the numbers that the Honorable Minister just presented, we could see that the money is there. The money is there to take all the teachers, them that's protesting right now, out the sun, to take them off the road. Guyana got the money. Guyana is not a poor country. I mean, while I was growing up, and I was a younger person and I in primary school, high school and them thing. You know that Guyana, you're hearing it, that Guyana is one of the poorest countries in the Caribbean. But not no longer. The money is there. And look, you see, the leader of the opposition, the Honorable Mr. Norton, is able to point out these things. But you know how government is going, Guyana. The opposition is just there to oppose sometimes we gotta think and we gotta now ask ourselves how come the opposition can work in harmony or as a counterpart or as an accommodation to the leading party or the government that's in power right now how come the two of them can't come together all right you got an idea here's how i could better on this idea and we could make this better for the people them because ultimately isn't that what we're supposed to be getting from the persons we put in them position to rule a better, smoother, happier experience in the country that we find ourselves. 
Now, if we listen to this budget, and if we listen to the presentation that Mr. Norton just made, we can say to ourselves, but watch, all of this money for miscellaneous? When the money could go to something that's causing an uproar right now in the country with people on the street and can't find food to put into their house and take care of the family and the children them? Now, we got to really contemplate. There is some type of unity that's missing from the core of the government in Guyana that I believe from my perspective if they had a little more unity amongst themselves things would go better for the citizens as well things would go better for the citizens if the government had a bit more unity among themselves and they were willing to work together versus always at odds and always snapping at each other and always calling each other out of the name and always tearing each other down how, how about build each other up and compliment each other and see if you can do a better job than the other person let me see who could do the best job at running the country and we ain't talking about any illusion we're talking about really doing this thing together together because look how much years we're doing it separated and fighting against each other this one that one and this one polarized on that side and that one on the other side at some point we're not gonna try something different look how many people for how many days is out in the street the world is watching and it's not just a governmental situation where the government should feel shame all the persons that is sitting down in parliament should be feeling some type of way about what's going on in the street you understand because it's six days and we asking ourselves when this solution is going to come to this what is going to be the solution to this issue with the teachers we heard from the ppp we heard from vice president jack Dio. we heard from the apnu we heard from Honorable Minister Norton. Let's have a conversation about this in the comment section. You heard both sides. What are your perspectives on this? What do you think about this? Who do you think has the better proposal? And how do you think these two proposals could come together and make a better situation for the teachers in Guyana right now? Let's have a conversation about this in the comment section. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. China, North Korea, ISIS, Al Qaeda. They may be watching this right now. Our military should not be mistaken for a cable news gab fest show. We don't care what you look like. We don't care who you voted for, who you worship, what you worship, who you love. It doesn't matter if your dad left you millions when he died or if he knew who your father was. We have been honed into a machine of lethal moving parts that you would be wise to avoid if you know what's good for you. We will not be intimidated. We will not back down. We've seen war. We don't want war. But if you want war with the United States of America, there's one thing I can promise you, so help me God. Someone else will raise your sons and daughters. Verb. Well crafted sea moss gummies, nutritious, delicious superfoods. What's your favorite flavor?